What's up guys? So uh, Norton finally stepped it up and they made a cloth sanding paper that's like the sky pads and the lemon pads from uh, Kovacs and the uh, 3M version has the other ones that are like this but this one here seems to be really good and we're going to shoot this job today and I'm going to show you how I use these. I haven't had them in a long time so I'm real happy that no, uh, Norton makes them because that's what we use here is Norton and we use 3M too but mostly Norton sandpaper. So when I found out they made these and the store had them, you know I definitely went ahead and, and picked them up to try them out. So we got 400 grit, 800, 1200, and 15. And these really work well for prepping out panels, uh, bumpers, and on your blend edges to go around with them. I used to use the blue ones from, uh, like I said, from uh, Kovacs, but they didn't have them at that store. So. These ones here are the same thing. We're gonna shoot this job here. We're doing a bedside, a tailgate, and a new bumper. And I'm gonna show you how I use these sanding uh, cloths to get a nice job without gouging the base. So let's get into it. So I was looking for any nibs that were in this sealer to show you guys how nice they work and I don't see any with the sealer. So I'm going to show you a trick that I do when I'm doing it with my base coat to help it to glide better when you're sanding out something. But you see this is here all sealed out and usually you'd get a dry edge right here with your sealer and you could use these to knock it down. So this is the 800 and uh, it would work well but you guys can see here that this looks like the edge may be rough, but when you wipe it and go to tack it, it's not any rougher than any other area of, of on this vehicle. So one thing great about that sealer from Sherwin is the way it melts in on your uh, edge of it. So I don't usually sand my edges of my sealer, only sometimes when I'm in a tight spot and uh, I gotta do a really, something special maybe, but most of the time this thing has such a nice even sheen and it blends in so nice to the panel that I don't sand it. So only if I see a visible nib will I hit it. And as I'm looking over this, I don't see any reason to. So I'm gonna show you on the base. Hopefully we don't have to sand it, but I'm still gonna show you what this is really good for and how I use it and a little trick to get it to sand real easy. Cause you guys know that water base is rubbery and it likes to snatch and stick to it good because it's a stickier paint than most solvents are. You know, the solvents like is smoother and dries quick, but with this water base, it likes to stay a little sticky. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I do that'll definitely help you guys out and help this paint slide nice. So let's go ahead and base it out and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys, we got our base down and now we have coverage on the panel. So now's the time. If you did have to nib this thing out would be the time to do it. That way you can hit it and dust it with one more coat of paint to make sure your metallics are uh, all nice and you don't have any sand scratches. So I'm going to use a 1200 grit of this stuff. And I like that because I know one drop coat will be enough to cover the scratch on this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lightly sand this, but I want to show you this trick that I do that helps you sand it a lot easier. 
All right, guys, so I got my blowgun, and that's the one I showed you guys before. It's got the adjustable valve on it, so you can adjust how much pressure you have in it. So you just want light pressure. But when you're sanding this, you want to blow a little bit of air underneath it. And what that does is it just puts a little bit of air underneath this pad and kind of hovers it to where it doesn't grab and it sands better. So just blow a little air under here. And you'll see how nice it sands, especially with that 1200 grit and also with blowing underneath it. So you guys know when I first started out in this business, I was using regular old school cross flows or even painting in places without booths. So you would sand everything, that way you could get a cleaner job and your job still were never that clean. So I would get full coverage with my sealer, my base, and then I'd sand it all down, blow and tack it, put one more coat or two more coats of base, depending on what kind of product I was using and then clear it. And a lot of guys do that trick, but with these good downdraft booths, you almost want to eliminate the sanding because you're just creating more dirt. So now, it, now with these nicer booths, I just make sure everything is clean and you get a lot better job. So I don't do as much sanding, especially now with these nice booths. So if you do get into a bind where you get some kind of dirt in your base, these are definitely a nice product to have and try that blowing of the uh, sandpaper because it really works well. But get you something you can adjust so that way you don't have too much air. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one more drop, we'll clear it and we'll check this job out. But I'm gonna leave the links to these uh, sanding pads if any of you guys like the Norton products, because I do, and I'll show you these in the description below. One other thing, make sure you tack this back off now to anybody new out there once you sand it, you got dust on that panel again. So you have to tack it off and get it back clean. So that way you can put down your base and you don't have any more dirt. So just wanted to give you that little tip to anybody out there that's new in the business. So, or doing stuff at the house. guys so i hope you like that little tip i showed you about hovering the pad with the uh, air but check out these nortons if you guys are a fan of the norton because now they got them so this job came out nice and it's definitely a good trick if you guys are in a dirty environment to sand your base and then put one more coat down and for years i did that but like i said this place here and these down draft bruce with this positive pressure you really get a clean job and sometimes you actually put more dirt by sanding the base and doing all that extra work. So I'm knowing what this place can produce, the environment I'm in here. And I like to set up my parts actually in the booth in certain areas, because a booth has sweet spots. And once you know those spots, I'll usually put my hood in the cleanest area and uh, different parts like that. But you guys see this thing here, we didn't nib it. And it's just as clean as that one over there. So that's just a lot of these clean jobs have to do with the spray booth. 
and other things too, but a good booth can do wonders for you. But if you don't have a good booth, and for many, many years I didn't, you got different tricks that you can do to definitely get a nicer job. So check out these Norton pads, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.